All right. Why do you think this is called a compound inequality? Because there's an and. Very good. Or there might be a what? Or. All right. So compound inequality for this inequality is that involve two states. All right. It's either going to be an and or it's going to be a what? Or. Now listen to me. And statements run together. Or statements go in the what? Opposite direction. And so let me try to explain to you why that's true. All right. If I'm graphing something, all right, on a number line, and I say I am greater than two and I am less than three. If I'm, come on now, you, this is where you got to concentrate. This is not a problem. This is where you just are trying to get smarter. If I say <coughs> I am greater than negative two and I am less than three, that means I'm everything what? In between. That's what that means. I am less than three and I am greater than negative two. That's why it's an and statement. Does everybody hear me? All right. Now, if I say this, I am less than negative two or I am greater than three. That's the way it would look. Because can I be both less than negative two and greater than three? That's not possible. I have to be one or what? The other. I can't be less than negative two and also greater than three. Hear me what I just said. I can't be in both positions. For the original problem up here, can I be in both positions? Yes. I can be less than three and I can be greater than negative two. That's why it's an and statement. And means it works for both. Or means it works for one or the other. All right, now there are some exceptions to the rules. I'm not sure we're going to get into too much detail on that. If you can solve an inequality, today's lesson is guess what? Simple, simple, simple. If you had a hard time with your inequalities last night, today is just a little bit harder. All right, yes. If I am less than negative two or I'm greater than three. Well, you tell me. Right. Do you agree? Because these numbers right here are not less than negative two or greater than three. Zero is not less than negative two or greater than three. That's how simple it is. Very, very simple. Anybody have any questions? All right, so now you're a master of compound inequalities. All right, very simple, very simple. All right, now what I want to do is let's go ahead and cut this out. Um, and let's paste the first two questions, and let's see if I'm in good shape. Bless you. All right, so here we go. Let's draw, put these up here. All right, now everybody put these first two questions down. I can show you how simple it is. All right, here we go. First thing I need you to understand is that a what? It's a what type of problem? Mm -hmm. And, all right, which means they're going to be running towards each other. All right, so here we go. The first part, I have to just do what? Add 8. Whoever said that, thank you. So this is going to be 12 is less than or equal to P. I do with that. But of course, that's not how we write it. We write it as what? P is greater than or equal to 12. P is greater than or equal to 12. <clears throat> is everybody good with this? What? Well, I'm not done with the problem yet. That's the first half because that's the first inequality. Now I'm doing the next one. The next one we would say P is what? Less than or equal to 16. 
Now, remember, I, I keep fussing at some of you because I, I, I just would like for you to ask for help now. That's all I want. I want you to ask for help now if you can't solve those two inequalities. You may have any issues. Come on, stop being distracted. What? <coughs> How I got what? Seriously, right here? How do I solve that? Now look, I'm now listen, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to get you to think. Look right here, what I'm trying to say. So I have a two and a negative fourteen. How do you think I got sixteen? Now they're not even learning. I don't have to tell you that. Come on. You agree with what I'm saying, right? Even if I had no clue what to do, you're smart enough to say, well, there's a 2 and a 14, I'm probably adding it. All right? And then eventually, the next problem, you'll see if your idea is correct or not. All right? The same thing with the other one now. All right? How did I get 12? You probably what? Add what? You add 8. Come on. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get everybody. You're not the only one. Trust me. You're the only one brave enough to ask a question. That's why I keep fussing at you. Come on, I'm trying to get you in the game. I can't get you in the game if you don't want to play at all. You sit there and don't do anything. All right? I don't think that's that hard. Do you agree? That wasn't that hard. Even if you didn't know, you should be able to say, well, I think this is what's happening. And then you're going to carry your observation over to problem number two if you're too scared to ask. All right? So now I'm looking at these two problems here, and on a number line, now we're gonna we're gonna graph this on a number line. The two answers are what? 12 and what? 16. If I'm less than or equal to 16, I'm going in this direction. If I'm greater than or equal to 12, I'm going in this direction. So those of you guys who are paying attention, you already knew that was the answer. All right? Now, do I really want you to do it on a number line? The answer is no, because we're more advanced than a number line. We're going to write it in what? In, what's that? Yes, exactly. And that's, that's referred to as interval notation. Interval notation. And you always read numbers from what? Left to right. So what's the first number? 12, which requires a bracket. And then we end at what? 16, which requires another what? Bracket. Guys, that's not hard. That is not hard. It's a pain because not like yesterday, we had one. Now for every problem, we have what? Two. That's why it's annoying. Oh, I got your joke. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number two, here we go. Number two, let's go. Everybody, solve number two quickly now. Carly, the first one. R is what? I want to see if you're... Negative. Thank you. Don't be sorry. You're in the game. Negative 14. And Allison, the second part. Yes, ma'am. Good job. Good job. All right. Now I'm happy. Happy. All right. Now, some people that's hard to see. All right. Some people that's hard to see. So, what I recommend is that you just draw quickly a number line and put negative 14 and negative 7. If I'm less than negative 14, it's an open circle, and I'm going to the left. If I'm greater than negative 7, open circle going to the what? Going to the right. You with me? So from there, I'm doing what? Interval notation. Jack, what am I doing for interval notation? Reading left to right. No. Reading left to right. Now, don't forget, I was telling somebody this morning, and somebody forgot this. That's where I'm at. 
to say, say it again. I didn't hear you. I know you meant negative infinity to negative 14. Do you agree with that? Then we say this symbol, union. And that goes, then we pick up from what? Yes, that's as hard as it gets right there. That's shorthand for the number line. Everybody, hopefully I'm trying to get you to see that. Right, so the first part was to be able to solve the inequality, and the second part is to interpret the inequality. Good? Girls, y'all good? Boys, y'all right up here? All right, I don't think that's that hard. Does everybody agree? All right, let's check out three and four now. Let me go ahead and uh, get three and four real quick. Let's bring it down here. All right, here we go. I, I, I really need your attention here. This is kind of hard. This one, a little bit different. So for the first one, right here, I have to do what first? Subtract what? Subtract seven. So now I have... 4a is greater than or equal to 24, and then I have a would be greater than or equal to 6, or a is greater than 5. Okay, so now I want everybody to put a star by this and put, pay attention, listen carefully, you're going to mess things up if you don't pay attention. Normally I said or means they're going in opposite directions. All right, and then I said they're kind of exceptions. All right, if I was doing this particular section, I, I would have another section for the ones that are the exceptions to the rules. All right, but now what I want you to do is I really want you to concentrate for me. All right, and I want you to uh, put five and six. All right, here is five and here is six. All right, now, if I am greater than five, I would have an open circle and I would be going to the right. And then greater than or equal to six would be a what? Closed circle going to the what? Yes, you're right, going to the right. All right. Now here's where one. I, I you have to listen to what I'm saying because every year this is where people get confused. An or statement. Listen to me. An or statement means that it has to be true for only one of them. What numbers are greater than five or greater than six? What numbers that are are greater than five or greater than six? What do you think? Yes, you're right. A lot. Well, yes, you're going towards infinity, but you have to have a starting spot. The starting spot is what's trouble. Seven. Seven would be an answer, but it's not the only answer. Where do I start at? I either start at what or what? What are my two choices? I either start at five or very good. Now watch and listen to me now. I either start at 5 or 6. So here's my possible answer, guys. My answer can be 5 to infinity, or the answer is 6 to infinity. Now, your job is to try to tell me which one is it. Is it 5 to infinity or 6 to infinity? What do you think, Colin? I think it's 6 to infinity because it's sort of like a, I hit the bracket, so like. I'm not entirely sure if that's how it's going to be. That would be if it was an and statement. Listen to me on this one. What number is greater than 5 and greater than 6? All numbers greater than what? 6. Now, come on. Listen to what I'm saying one last time. 
Are these numbers greater than six from there to there? So that's why they can't be included on a what? On an and statement. Is everybody with me? All right. The answer for an or statement would be this. Now, why is that true? I'm right. You got to listen to me. Look up, look up, look up. I'm going to draw something on the number line. All right. This right here is my number line. Do you agree? Come on, I'm trying to make you see it. All right. Now, that part of the number line, are those numbers greater than six or greater than five? Are any of them greater than five or greater than six? No, not. So those are out. Do you agree? Now, look here. From here to here, are those numbers greater than six? No. Are they greater than five? Yes. They're greater than five, correct? So I told you just a minute ago, an or statement means they only have to be true for what? One. So is that the answer? Yes. Now I'm going to draw one more. See if you understand what I'm saying. From here to here. Are those numbers greater than five? Yes. Are they greater than six? Yes. So the answer for an or statement is the numbers that work for one or the other inequality is the solution. All right. So the answer is what? The answer would be anything greater than five. Anything greater than five. All right, obviously we're going to do a couple more to make sure you're understanding. Them. Listen carefully. Go. Yes. Because these points over here, listen to me now, these points over here are also greater than five. They don't have to be. The reason they don't have to be, listen to what I'm saying, is because it's a what. It's an or statement. Remember, an or statement means it can be true for one or the other or both. So listen to what he's saying. Come on, I want you to hear me. It's important. One more time. An or statement means you can be true for one or the other or what? Both. You hear me? So I'm asking you now, please look up. These numbers here, are they true for any of them? No. These numbers here are true for what? One of them. So that's an answer. Because it's an or statement, it only has to be true for what? One of the two inequalities. You hear me? These numbers right here, now come on, watch me. These numbers right here are true for what? Both. That's exactly correct. Oh, that's exactly correct. An or statement has to be true for one inequality, and and has to be true for what? Both. That's how your mind should be thinking about it. All right, and it's going to take me some time. All right, that's why I'm saying pay attention, get involved, because it's if, if, if you don't do tonight's homework, tomorrow's a little bit harder. You got to get to practice. No. All right, here we go. Number four. Put a little star by number four, please. <clears throat> and then above or below or on the side, make sure you know this is always a what? <coughs> it's always an ant. Now to solve this, I have to undo a what? Plus four, right? So how do I undo a plus four? So I put a minus four, a minus four. Uh-oh. I also have to put a minus four over here. All right? That's the easiest way to do that. Everybody with me on this? All right? And when I do that now, what's two minus four? Negative two is less than or equal to G, which is less than what? Three. So what does that mean? That means G is between negative three and two. 
right? G is between, I'm sorry, G is between negative 2 and 3. Thank you. Here we go. Bracket at negative 2, comma, 3, parentheses. Look again for this equal to sign forces a bracket. All right? Parentheses. Parentheses is if it's less than or greater than. All right. Everybody okay with that? All right. That one wasn't that hard, but it's something new for you. All right. Now, for us, we're not doing the word problems in this particular section. So here we go. We're going to try now. I'm going to bring down six and seven and see what we're doing with that. All right, here we go. <clears throat> All right, Alex, help me out with six. What do I have to do? Beautiful. So F is <coughs> F is less than 11. Thank you very much. And max. And F is what? Right? So, F is greater than or equal to uh, 6. Right. So now, just to visualize, and eventually some of you will get good enough, you can just say, well, this is the answer without the number line. But I do think right now the number line helps. So I put 6 and 11, less than 11, open, greater than or equal to 6, so it's everything in between. Everybody with me on this? What's the matter? Julia, come on. All right. So my answer is bracket 6, 11, parentheses. Everybody good? Everybody okay with that? All right. Number 7. All right, Kate, what am I doing on number 7? <clears throat> Good job, girl. Emily. Good, but greater than that. Okay. Anybody have any issues with that? Any issues? Solving them? Very simple. All right, now in my opinion, I would draw a number line. I'd put negative 12 in, and I'd put negative 7 in. Negative 12 is greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Everybody with me? And so my answer is just bracket, negative 12, negative 7. <clears throat> Any issues with that? Any issues? Any issues? All right. Let's check out now uh, 8 and 9. All right, Jess, number 8. What am I doing? Go ahead, I'll let you finish. Beautiful. All right, so let's do a number line now. Greater than or equal to 8, solid dot, going to the right. Come on, come on. Hey, Jack, I'm, I'm right here, right in front of you watching every move you make. Open circle, going to the left. And it's an or statement, correct? All right. Ben, do you want to tell me what the answer is then? What kind? Then we say 
This is a symbol for union, which is another way of saying like and. All right. What else? Bracket or parentheses. Very nice. There you go. Alex, you okay with that? Girls? Colin? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk, talk about number nine then. All right, Will. <clears throat> First one, what is it? I'm listening. Um, Good job. Or? Good, which makes it? Good, perfect. All right, now let's look. Greater than or equal to 1, less than negative 1. All right, you want to try to tell me the interval notation for that? What? Very good, buddy. You're in the game, man. Good job. Exactly correct. Is that alright with you, Allison? Kate? Is that alright with you? Carly, you haven't said much since you started out strong. You understand it all, right? It's very something. Very something. Alright, here we go. Let me grab 10 and 11. Let's just keep right on going. All right. All right, Jack. What do I have to do on number 10, do you think? Um, a little so bit different. It's, it just subtracts seven. Very nice. Very nice. Subtract seven. Now watch, I'm just doing this. You don't have to do that because you should, that should be common sense, right? And then um, what am I left with? Negative 12 is less than and then you have 12. Oh, sorry, 15. Um, now what do I have to do probably? Have to add 12. I'm isolating the P, Jack. Oh. What do I have to do? Yes, sir. Very good. So I'm just writing all the work out here just to make sure everybody sees what we did. And, and then so then. So what in interval notation what would the answer be? Um, hey, keep right up here. Could be okay. Yeah, parentheses. Um, negative four and infinity. No. Come on. We have to stop. Because it says right there, p is between negative four and five. Oh, That's what I that means. I understand that. You don't have to tell me that. P is between negative four and five. That's I'm, I'm trying to make sure you hear me. That's what that means right there. Listen to what I'm saying. I, I never understood why people had trouble with that. Literally, it's saying P is between what two numbers? Negative 4 and 5. That's literally what that means. That's how I tell kids. I don't like kids say negative 4 is less than P, less than or equal to 5. No. You just say P is between negative 4 and 5. Everybody get on that? All right. Max, go. Number 11. Uh, really, Max? Come on, man. It's just the same as number 10. 
Did you do number 10? Oh, yeah, it's the same. Okay. So what do I do? I... That's hilarious. I Absolutely hilarious. Tell him, Alex. Look, look, let me tell you something. First of all, that's excellent. Is Why is that funny? Go back and listen to the tape. Wow, I'm laughing at myself because I just watched somebody do a problem. It's the same problem on number 11, and I have no clue what to do. That's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. It's embarrassing. Finish. Subtract four. So what would it be? Beautiful. That is exactly correct. Max, all he did was he subtracted four. Now what are you going to do? Now you just divide by seven. That's simple. <laughs> so negative one, less than or equal to C, less than or equal to two. So the answer in interval notation. Good. Wow, easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just accidentally wrote it wrong. So look right here. Here we go, here we go. That's mine. Go. All right, so it is from negative 1 to 2. Negative 1 to 2. All right. Now let's find the next one, 12 and 13. A little bit more involved. All right, a little bit more involved. So here we go. Again, now for us, again, remember what I'm telling you, it should be kind of a, just a mental. All right, Jack, number 12. What am I doing for the first one? Which makes it? Good, then what? Whoa, whoa, no, I'm, I'm still on this first one. Oh. Beautiful. Perfect. Now the next one. Exactly. So now let's look at the number line. Perfect. Open or closed. Beautiful. That's it. So interval notation would be? Very, very easy. Very easy. <coughs> Yes, sir. Equal and greater than or equal to. It's closed if there's an equal. All right, here we go, 13. All right. Now on 13, again, we should be adding 2. So that makes 24 greater than or equal to 4M. Then we're going to divide both sides by what? Four. So that means six is greater than or equal to m, or we should write it as m is less than or equal to <coughs> six. Anybody have any issues? All right. Let's see what's going on next. Come on, you're getting on my nerves, Jack. Get over here and sit, because you already got on my nerves. All right, now we're subtracting 5. Negative 3m is less than or equal to what? Say it. Negative 18. Wow, feels good, doesn't it? Real good. All right. Now, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, which is the sign. So now I have m is 
greater than or equal to six. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, this is correct. All right, so I have a problem here now. Or I have a problem. This is what I'm trying to tell you. These are thinking questions. It's definitely thinking questions. All right? So please look. All right? Look up. Uh, again, I'm, I, if I was writing this book, I, I wouldn't make it this tricky. But please pay attention. They're, they're thinking you can handle this. So if I'm less than or equal to 6, I'm going this way. Everybody good? Then the other one says I'm greater than or equal to 6. So that means I'm solid again. I'm going in this direction. Now, does everybody agree it's a what? Or statement. So what numbers are less than 6 or greater than 6? All of them. That is exactly correct. All of them. All right? So we would say from what? Negative infinity to infinity. All right? And, and again, like I said, put a little star by that problem. I, I think that one's very tricky. No. That's very hard. Very difficult. All right, I, I want to continue on because I think some of them might be a little bit trickier. So here we go. I'm going to grab uh, 14 and 15. All right, let's see if this is any harder. Okay, so the first thing I need to do for number 14 is... Right? <clears throat> which gives me negative 4a is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 16. Agree? So now what? Yep, and I get Now I have to do one on the next one. Add 14. Add 14. But now what? So that would be 6 is less than A, which means A is what? Oh, man. Which means, yeah, somebody said 6. Thank you. Four. Perfect. Thank you. Look at that real quick. Now again, I got another problem here, guys. <coughs> big problem. Big problem. All right, please pay attention. All right, and that's why I said I'm glad I'm doing a little bit more at the end because they're starting to try to trick you here. All right, so if I'm looking at this, here is negative four and here is six. Is that correct? Wait, Mr. Stroud, it's supposed to be four, not six. I know. I don't know why I keep putting that. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. You know how I love people pointing out my mistakes. All right, so here we go. So now the problem here is what? It's an and statement. What numbers are less than negative four and greater than four? Think about what I just said. What numbers are less than negative 4 and greater than 4? You, you know, okay, so listen, Allison, give me a number that's less than negative 4. And it also has to be greater than 4. Nothing. That is correct. That's why I'm saying you can't do these problems if you're not going to think about numbers. That's why this is really, really hard for a lot of kids because they just want to write down the answer instead of thinking about the possibility. I said, what numbers are less than negative four and greater than four? There are no numbers that are less than negative four and greater than four. So that's what I'm saying. You got you to gotta think about every single one of them. All right, which brings me to 15 now. Here we go. So the first thing I need to do is to do what? Subtract 5. 
So now, negative. That's okay. Thank you. Listen to me. There's no solution. You with me? Do you understand why it's no solution? Come on. You can't be less and greater than at the same time. Hold up. Hold up. We got one more to go. Is greater than or equal to 4. Therefore, y is less than or equal to negative 4. Everybody good? Then on the other one, subtracting 4, 3y is less than negative 9. So y is less than what? Negative 3. Now you gotta, I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta work tonight. So now you gotta be with me. Hold up. Don't be in a hurry. Come on. You got, you got 10 minutes snack. I, I can cut into snack for a minute. Here's negative 4 and here's negative 3. Less than or equal to negative 4 and less than negative 3. Now, in order to be successful, an or statement means it has to be true for only one of them. <coughs> So what do you think the answer is? Three, uh, negative infinity and negative three. Exactly correct. Negative infinity to negative three. Because it's an or statement, because it's an or statement, all of these numbers are included. All right, now your homework, just to make sure you're hearing me. I don't want you to do the word problems. And we got to 15, correct? Yeah. So the most important thing is, hey, hey, I need your attention. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, to do um, 18 through 27, but please review. Please review. All right. The, the ones where you have to write the inequality is not that hard. All right. I'm going to provide the answer, so you should be in good shape for that. Very, very good day for most of you. All right. Very good. Very good for most. I don't have to do it. I don't care. I care you're interrupting me. I'm distracting him. I asked him a question, and you guys are messing around. He has no clue how to do it. Because you guys think something's so funny.